Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. Today I wanted to talk about the three options for handling emotions. So we'll get to that in a minute. And I enjoy this sun. It's beautiful. It's actually like in the 60s here in Pennsylvania. Early March. Unbelievable. Absolutely beautiful. I'll be squinting throughout this, but I really want to sit out here in the sun as I record this. Listen to the birds. Feel that fresh air. Feel the warmth. This means spring is right around the corner. Absolutely love it. Blue sky, white clouds. If you got uh, decent enough weather, get outside, folks. Expand your horizons beyond the four walls of your house. Even if you can't move much, just go sit outside. Smile. Enjoy nature. All right. So the three options for dealing with emotions. So if you're a fan of Dr. Sarno, he's talked about repressed emotions for decades. You know, that was his original theory. All of these symptoms are created by the brain repressing the emotions and perceiving them as dangerous. So when they start bubbling up to the surface, the brain creates pain or other symptoms to distract us from those emotions. I believe he's right. I think the perception of danger, in his theory, emotions, is absolutely what can cause symptoms. Now, there are other perceived dangers beyond emotions, and I cover that in a lot of ways. If you search uh, YouTube for pain-free you, perceived danger, 11 examples. Pain-free you, perceived danger, 11 examples. I expand on that greatly there. So, he's right. Repressed emotions. And many of us learned to repress our emotions in childhood. We were taught children are meant to be seen, not heard. If you're upset... What are you sad about? What are you, a big baby? Um, I'll give you something to cry about. Oh, you're angry? Let me knock that anger out of you. You know, all sorts of examples of parents not wanting to experience our childhood emotions and making it as if it's a bad thing to have those emotions in the first place. So as a result, many of us have learned suppress, repress, and in some cases, the traumas are so significant, the brain automatically says this is too intense, and it literally can wipe it from our memory. There, are, you know, some people have tra traumatic or traumas so big that uh, they can't recall them, which is a good thing. It's a protective mechanism of the brain saying that's too much, right? So, I'm not. This isn't a trauma video. It's all about how do we deal with emotions. The current stuff right so repress suppress push away run away judge yourself harshly uh, criticize yourself I'm such a baby why am I crying all the time I'm angry I'm out of control in my case I never wanted to be angry because I never wanted to be an asshole like my father because he had a temper and boy when he got angry we knew it so in that case it wasn't that he told me specifically don't be angry but he showed me, he modeled that anger was a bad thing. And I vowed never to be like him. So what did I do with anger? Push it aside. Make believe I'm, I'm not angry. And as a result, I've been a pretty happy, chill guy. Uh, was that a facade? Was that a fake persona? No, I think it's really who I am. But in the real cases where I do get angry, my default is, ah, I'm not going to get angry. Well, I'll tell you. You know, I do get angry. It's normal. It's human. I've learned that that's okay, right? So just understand that repressing emotions, suppressing emotions, avoiding them, and judging yourself harshly for them, not a strategy I recommend. So that's one of the options. Now, the other option is to, you know, we're always told to express our emotions. And a lot of people interpret that to mean I need to share my emotions with the people I'm emotional about. I'm going to vent. I'm going to vomit my emotions all over the people I'm pissed off with or upset with. And if you've done that, you know it doesn't always go great. 
It has social consequences, relationship consequences with parents, kids, partners, all that stuff. It's very easy to express our emotions in a way that other people can't handle, don't want to hear, they don't want to accept it, they get defensive and they blow back at you. So my recommendation is not necessarily to express your emotions in a very vigorous way. Now, you know, there is absolutely an appropriate time to set a boundary and have an adult conversation. But try not to do that when you're like all boiled up, suppressed, 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 ready to blow, and then vent the emotions on the other person. Because if you come at it that way, inevitably, it's not going to be an adult conversation. It's going to be an angry, sad, despair, blame game uh, type of a, a, a combative situation. And those situations generally don't go so well. So I'm suggesting... Don't express your emotions directly at the people you're mad at initially. Again, you may, under cooler circumstances, decide that I need to set a boundary and I'm going to do it in an adult, calm way. That's separate from what I'm talking about, about vomiting our emotions on other people around us. Uh, so if you have a tendency to blow up at other people, um, express your emotions very aggressively, and it doesn't go so well, what does that do? It teaches you emotions are bad. I better lock them up. Throw away the key. I better suppress them, repress them. And now I'm judging myself for them because I'm apparently out of control and they don't like my emotions. So I'm not allowed to experience them. I better lock them up. So now between these two things, you're kind of between a rock and a hard place. You're like, what the heck do I do with this? I better repress them because in the past when I've expressed them, it's gone poorly. I've had social and relationship consequences as a result of expressing my emotions. So guess what? Those aren't the only two options. There's a third option, right? The third option is to allow yourself to experience the emotions in private, in the privacy of your head, your heart, your home, your car, your bedroom, your bathroom, on a walk. Experience the emotions. Allow them, I love that word, allow your emotions to be felt. Now here's the key. Do not judge yourself for having the emotions. If you're sad about something because somebody hurt your feelings, it's justified. You're allowed to be sad. Doesn't make you a weak person, doesn't make you broken, doesn't make you out of control. Be sad, allow it, cry in private, right? You probably don't wanna burst into tears in the middle of a Thanksgiving dinner with 20 people around. And have everybody in the room stare at you and go, oh my God, what's wrong with them? All right? But allow yourself to feel it. Even if that means getting up from the table and going to the restroom to experience that emotion without judgment. Don't blame yourself. Don't judge yourself. Anger doesn't make you crazy. It didn't make me an asshole like my father. It just means that something legitimate pissed me off. And anger is normal. So feel the emotion in private without judgment. Don't blame yourself. Look, emotions have no meaning other than the meaning you get to assign to them, right? And here's the other thing. People have told me, Dan, you know, I felt my emotions in the past and I just get stuck in them. So I avoid them. I avoid my emotions at all costs because when I allow myself to cry, I end up crying for three days or three hours and it exhausts me. Or I get angry and I stay angry and I stay angry. Well, the only way you can stay in an emotion that you're allowing yourself to feel is if you get stuck in the story, right? I call that story mode. Stay out of story mode, right? If you're angry, allow yourself ugh, to feel angry. You already know why you're angry. You don't have to play the story in your head over and over and over again for the next three weeks because inevitably that's a surefire way to stay angry for the next three weeks. Stay out of story mode. You know the story. No sense in replaying it in the movie in our head. <clears throat> so, feel the emotions without judgment. Stay out of story mode. And when you do this, and really allow yourself to experience the emotion without judgment, without the story, guess what happens to those emotions? They dissipate very quickly, 
oftentimes within a minute or two. Try it, but it takes work, it takes practice. I don't like the word work, it takes practice, it takes a commitment to allowing it without judging yourself and without getting lost in the story. And what you will find is that emotions will come, they'll be felt, and then they'll go, right? And during this process, you're going to come to some adult decisions to go, you know what? This situation keeps on happening. I need to have an adult conversation with my child, my parent, my partner, whomever it may be. But if you've allowed yourself to experience the emotions, it's not a boiling powder keg ready to, ready to blow. It's a much more calm adult conversation. And if you can do that and come at the conversation, the adult conversation with love, compassion and saying hey you know we need to have a conversation i want you to understand that this scenario is causing me to feel a certain way and i want you to know about that so we can work through this together see how that's much better than just waiting till you're ready to blow and then blowing right so there are three options to how to deal with emotions repress suppress run away right express vigorously vomit our emotions on everybody else, blow up at everybody. I don't recommend either of them. And the third option is right in the middle, which is allow yourself to feel the emotions without judging yourself harshly for having the emotions in the first place. And then drop the story. You know the story. You don't have to replay it 42 times over the next six days. You just don't. You already know the story. And if the situation keeps on happening multiple times, it's probably time for a rational, calm, adult conversation with the person who keeps on uh, triggering these emotions in you. But do it calmly, as an adult, with care, compassion, love for the other person, saying, hey, maybe you don't realize this, but these are things that end up bothering me. And I'm sure I end up bothering or triggering you too, but I'd love to work it out with you because I don't like this emotional charge between us. So there are a couple of options here. Repress, suppress, run away, push away, blow up, vomit them on everybody else, or feel them without judgment and without the story. Because you really don't want to get stuck in an emotion for days, weeks, months, years, right? You really don't. Because do you really want to be known as the angry person? Or the sad person who breaks into tears at every moment. Now, I'm not judging that negatively. It's, it's, it's what happens. It's not your fault. But understand, we do have options as it relates to our emotional state. Now, why do we do this in the first place? Number one, it allows us to experience emotions without getting stuck in them and without running from them. We're supposed to feel emotions. We are emotional beings. That's how we were created and designed, and that, that's who we are. So let's not fight the emotions, but let's not blow up at everybody around us, right? But why do we do this? Well, if we go back to Sardo's original theory that the brain perceived these emotions as dangerous, what's the most straightforward, straight-line way of teaching the brain, hey, you don't have to protect me from these repressed emotions? Well, feel them. And if you do that consistently and allow yourself to feel the emotions without judging yourself harshly, without blowing up and creating all this social chaos around you, your brain will eventually go, holy crap, look at Dan. He's been feeling... <coughs> he's been feeling all sorts of really intense emotions. Current stuff. But nothing bad's happening. He's feeling them. He's not beating himself up over having them. He's not judging himself. He's not getting stuck in the story. He's not blowing up and creating emotional and uh, social chaos all around him. He's feeling them, and then they're dissipating. Your brain will learn through exposure. This is like exposure therapy to emotions. Your brain will learn through exposure and consistency. It is a practice that these emotions that it's been trying so desperately to protect us against. Again, Sarno's right. The brain will learn that these emotions really aren't truly a danger. Because how? You're showing the brain that you can feel them, allow them, without judging yourself, without getting lost in the story, without blowing up at everybody around you and creating all sorts of additional chaos. 
And in my opinion, that feel your emotions is the option that will teach your brain safety. Repressing and pushing emotions away does not work. And don't be afraid of fear. Don't be afraid of sadness. Don't be afraid of emotions that have in the past created some symptoms for you. What we're doing here with what I've just described is teaching the brain a different response to emotions. Because if we keep on running from the emotions because I'm afraid to feel fear, because I'm afraid that fear will create this perception of danger and create more symptoms, as it possibly has for you, no doubt, not disagreeing with the fact that that may have been your experience. But the cool part is, as we learn more, we can create a new experience with a new reaction or response to our emotions. And we can literally teach and train the brain that allowing our emotions to be felt is just normal. And we're supposed to do it. You know? We cry. We can shoot liquid out of our face when we get sad. We're designed that way. So it doesn't make us broken or weak or a big baby or even worse names. It just means we're a normal human being experiencing the normal range of human emotions. Don't judge yourself. Don't beat yourself up over it. But don't run away from the emotions. Allow them. I'm not saying you have to love being sad or angry or jealous or ashamed or guilty or whatever. But you don't have to fight them. If you're fighting with your emotions, you're judging them as bad and your brain's always going to default to pushing them away, locking them up, locking them up. So I hope this makes sense. You know, there are multiple options. And again, if you find that a certain person in your life, somebody at work, somebody in your family, a partner, continues to push your buttons over and over and over again, allow yourself to feel the emotions, but then in a calm, mature way, have an adult conversation and say, hey, look, this is uh, something that's happening over and over again. I'd love to work it out with you so that it doesn't have to keep on creating this tension between us. So that might be four actual options. You know, the fourth option being have a uh, adult conversation and set a boundary, which can certainly give you a sense of power and say, I'm not going to take this crap anymore. And you don't have to do that aggressively. But setting boundaries can also be a very useful thing because it reclaims some of your power. Because what happens is if you allow somebody to trigger you over and over and over and over again without ever saying anything, you're giving up your power. So power is a big deal. And I think by reclaiming your power with an adult conversation, after you have allowed yourself to feel the emotions and allow them to dissipate, in my opinion, that's the safest way of going about this stuff. So a little bit of a long video here. I'm enjoying the sunshine getting a little bit of vitamin D um, Sunday afternoon. So I hope you found this useful. And uh, as always, I'm going to see you tomorrow. So love you all. Take care.